Not Hill in Scotland couldn't be any more different than the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit that hosted the last round of the British Formula 3 Championship. It's shorter, it's hillier and more importantly it's very narrow. That's good news for the fans but bad news for the teams like Fortec and Carlin. Both Fabio Carboni and James Courtney's unplanned pit visits at Silverstone came about through teammate contact. First, the Fortec boys nearly wiped each other out after just a couple of hundred yards. And then, half a lap later, it was Keyhan and Courtney's turn to send the blood pressure on the pit wall sky high. All we want is the cars to, to come home in one piece and first and second, hopefully, when they're running wheel to wheel, um, there's always scope for a, a bit of an error, error of a judgment. It's a bit, bit nerve-wracking, to say the least. You can only go quicker if the two guys are pushing each other. It's not really a disadvantage at all, I don't think. Yeah, sure, it's nervous when they're racing, but they're here to race and just don't do anything silly with each other. But apart from that, race as hard as you want to. So they're in the car on their own. They, they do what they want in a way. And things happen so quickly, we forget these things happen in split seconds. So um, they're making reactions to situations. Um, they don't have time to think about what I've said. I think they realise that they're in uh, probably the toughest series they can be in. And, and they come here to, to learn in the toughest series. And, when you're in that situation, things are going to happen. And unfortunately for us, it did. But I think if you try to interfere, then it could be dangerous. What we can't have is any aggro in the teams, because it starts with the drivers and the engineers and the mechanics. So I've got a stamp on it. And uh, we've got a great team, and we want to keep it that way. I think he is a completely different situation to me. You know, he's got four cars, four individuals, four uh, drivers bringing their different budgets. And my thing is completely uh, with Renault and they're told from the beginning of the year, you know, you work with each other, your, your teammates uh, in and out of the car, and, and the whole thing is, uh, is much more relaxed. Talking of relaxed, James Courtney hasn't been losing any sleep over his Silverstone nightmare or his failure to win a race so far this season. I don't know where they got all those ideas from, the pressure's getting to me. Sure, it's, I don't know, I want, want the wind to come, but it's showing that we're the fastest car out there, and we're, Quickest guy, the one that everyone's chasing, is just waiting for it all to come together. And I think I've got a good feeling about this week. Testing's been really, really well. Uh, did loads of practice starts and found loads of time there, so it's all, all really good. Courtney may not be leading the championship anymore, but I doubt he'll be panicking just yet. He's only 13 points behind Robbie Kerr, and the battle for third is even closer. No surprise seeing James Courtney on pole position. That's his seventh of the season. The big shot for qualifying was Ronnie Bremer, alongside on the front row. Behind him, he has Kovalainen and Bruce Giovanni. But Robbie Kerr, the championship leader, starts in fifth. But for James, the most important thing is to get to that first corner, leading the race. Well, James Courtney does indeed have the advantage of that pole position. Ronnie Bremer of Denmark alongside him on the front row. Then it's Heke Kovalainen of Finland on row two with the Frenchman Bruce Giovanni. Fifth place on the starting grid, the blue and white car of Robbie Kerr. Then Fabio Carboni of Italy and the Brit Mark Taylor lines up alongside the Brazilian Anani Giudici. Ninth and tenth on the grid, Michael Kian of Ireland and Mark Mayle of Great Britain ahead of the South African Alan van der Merwe and the Swede Robert Dahlgren. The American Richard Antonucci is on row seven with Rob Austin alongside him as the cars prepare to take the start. Bit of creeping there from James Courtney, maybe nervousness, but it's a good start. Ronnie Bremer slots into second place, holding behind him Hecke Kovalein and then Bruce Giovanni as they weave their way down to Duffer's Dip. Looks like James has finally got a good start. It's good to see him into the first corner in the lead and hopefully he can... Uh, oh, big shunt there. And that's Richard Antonucci off on the outside of Duffer Stip. A lot of damage and a lot of debris across the track there. And I think that was Mark Mayle picking up some damage as well. But at the head of the order, number one, James Courtney, Ronnie Bremer, the date. Whoa, great battle going on there between number 11, Bruce Jarney, and number seven, Robbie Kerr. But that is a very tender-looking Richard Antonucci walking away from his car. Now, Richard had some back injuries last year from a Formula Renault accident. I just hope that hasn't made them any worse. But look at this, absolute hammer and tongs. These guys are really pushing hard on the opening lap here. They've got to make their move. It's such a tight and twisty circuit that, that really it's got to be now or never. Well, it's going to be never for the moment because the safety car coming out onto the track. Richard Antonucci's front wing is removed. There is indeed the safety car. James Courtney right behind the rest of the drivers starting to weave to warm up their tyres. And Richard Antonucci there walking back, but he doesn't look too well. He looks very stiff. I don't know what's happened there. Yeah, he's in a lot of pain there. 
very narrow track and James Courtney making the perfect start as we ride with Ronnie Bremer off the line, but this is a very narrow track. Very narrow, but James, I mean, he's one of the few people on the grid who's actually got a downhill momentum as he starts off. Everyone else is on the uphill, so uh, he had the advantage there. And there we see just the tail end of Richard Antonucci's accident. The car almost looks as if it had flipped there. It certainly came down from quite a big height, and that may be the reason why Antonucci's in a bit of pain. Meanwhile, though, James Courtney gets the green flag. The race underway again. Bremer, Kovalainen, and Joani, Kirk, Carboni, the top six. And down into Duffer Cleanly through for everybody this time. Riding in seventh place with Mark Taylor, the number three car, right up on the tail of Fabio Carboni. Banging the cars hard over the curbs. It really is a case of controlled aggression around this track. It's one of the few tracks in Britain where you have to really hammer these curbs. Um, they, the cars take a lot of abuse. I know the teams moan about it because uh, at the end of the day, they've got a big repair bill. Oh, and a car right dancing on the curbs there. The number five car, Fabio Carboni, and that really is giving Taylor a chance to challenge. Meanwhile, the battle's still on for fourth and fifth places. Giovanni and Kerr. Battles all the way up and down the order. This is a tight, twisting track, and there is absolutely no margin for error. That's right, these guys have got to be very committed with their overtaking manoeuvres. We've got Mark on board here at the moment. He's going for the outside move, if, if he can pull this, and he does, he really does pull off a great move there around the outside. Mark Taylor, great move. That has lost Carbone in momentum, and Michael Kearhan challenges down at Butchers. And, oh, all sorts of chaos. Kian off, Carboni off, Judici's been delayed. He's got some front-end damage. That's given Hosokawa a chance and Alan van der Merwe in the two Fortec cars. There's the number 12 car running without its front wing. It's van der Merwe's out, scrummed the rest. Robert Dahlgren and Rob Austin going through as well. The Swede in the blue and green car. Rob Austin in the pale blue and white car. Then it's the Japanese driver, Shinya Hosokawa and they're all bundling together down the Taylor's hairpin. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. Formula 3 cars, about as fast a racing car as you could ever take around this tight, twisting, mountainous circuit. That's a very late move there by Kihan. He just tags the rear end of Carboni, and Giudici behind has nowhere to go as uh, Kihan slows up a little bit. Really unlucky there for Giudici, and a, a bit of a late move there by Kihan. Meanwhile, back to the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth places. Giovanni, Kerr, and Taylor. And it's the number three car of Mark Taylor closing in on the railway straight down to the Taylor's hairpin. Not named after him, I hasten to add, but he is pushing very hard at the tail end of this group. Ahead of them, it's still Courtney, Bremer and Kovalainen. One, two and three across the line, then fourth, fifth and sixth. Mark's pushing very hard in the early stages of this race and uh, doing a great job there. But Just pushed a little bit too hard there, though. Mark Taylor, bang, into the tyre wall at Duffer Stip. And rejoining there, Robbie Kerr, but looks like he's got a problem, maybe a front puncture. Mark got a great drive out of the hairpin on the outside of Robbie, and Robbie just comes across, takes his line. Unfortunate there for Mark, and uh, unfortunate for Robbie as well, not seeing him. Well, once the front wing's gone, you lose all the downforce off the front. That is the end result. But at the head of the order, no such problems for James Courtney. Now, he's been in the wars and had some disappointing results early in the season. He's now out in front, no problems there. A front wheel and front tyre being replaced on Kerr's car. Taylor, though, is just simply walking home from Duffer's dip. That is the end of his race, and it looks like the end of Kerr's race as well, back in the pits. Really disappointing there for Mark, because I thought he was going to have a really strong race. He's, he's looking good. Well, those that can lip read, no doubt, know his opinion of what happened down there. Meanwhile, the battle going on at the tail end of the order as well. Tor Graves, Andrew Thompson, Stefano Fabi and Matthew Gilmore all up together for 11th, 12th and 13th and 14th places. No one wants to give up in this race, but it's this man at the head of the order onto the last lap of the race, catching a couple of back markers, but it is a dominant victory for the first time this season for James Courtney. The Carlin Motorsport team will be very happy indeed with this. Heads up to the chequered flag. Trevor Carlin and the team already up on the pit wall, ready to celebrate. The chequered flag is prepared as he crosses the line now. It's victory for James Courtney, the first of the two races at Knock Hill. And he will be very happy indeed with that. The Aussie is back on top. James Courtney taking victory by 3.8 seconds from Ronnie Bremer. Hecky Kovalainen third, Bruce Giovanni fourth, and Alan van der Merwe in fifth. Next up in sixth place, it's the former Formula Ford champion, Robert Dahlgren from Sweden. Ahead of Rob Austin, the Japanese Shinya Hosokawa, with Gian Domenico Brusatin of Italy and Tom Sisley completing the top 10. But it's the celebrations for the Aussie, James Courtney.
Um, yeah, the car, guys worked really hard all week and the car was awesome. Um, we did some practice in between the last race and this race and worked on our starts and it helped us today. Got away and they didn't have to look back, so the times were really, really quick and looking forward to this afternoon now. So James has finally discovered his winning streak. Join us after the break to see if he can do it again. The chart changes from Sunny D, Black Current Blast, Apple and Kiwi, Tropical Tornado, and finally, outrageous orange outburst. Make the moment at Habba Hotel. Now you can own Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on video and DVD. Mr. Potter. Including amazing, never before seen footage. <gasps> Wicked. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone bring the magic home on video and DVD. I've just moved in next door. Could I borrow some sugar? Puffs. Sure. Ooh, won't be alone. Sugar puffs are delicious puffs of wheat trapped in little honey jackets. Uh. Have you got any milk? <laughs> Collect all six sea squirters. There's one free in special packs of sugar puffs. Now there are over one million. Welcome back to Knock Hill. Race two is just a few minutes away. Just enough time for Steve to give us the news on the scholarship races. After Sweeney Racing's domination of the early rounds, it was the turn of Meritus Racing to head the starting grid for the all scholarship class race at Knock Hill. Dubner to Gavin Smith and Dungan and Stephen Colbert ahead of Adam Carroll. They all made a clean start, but already the fun was starting behind them. The next casualty, though, was Smith, spinning his front row away and bringing out the safety car. But it was still Colbert out in front, pursued by scholarship championship leader Adam Carroll, while number 68, Karen Chanduk, was the next to practice the Highland Fling. At the flag, though, it was the first win of the season for Colbert and his Meritus Racing team. But Carroll's Sweening Racing Delara was already on pole position for race two, and ahead of Colbert and Smith into Duffus Dip. Exciting stuff, and Stefan Hodgetts was the next man to go sightseeing in the Scottish Highlands. He was later joined by Diego Romani and the brilliantly named Brazilian, Rec Junior. The meritous duo of Colbert and Smith had also spanned down the order and narrowly avoided joining Clivio Piccioni's circular tour. But unfazed at the head of the field, Adam Carroll was heading for his sixth scholarship win from eight starts. Well, you coming here would be difficult. We didn't really know what to expect, so uh, that's been pretty good. Firstly, you know, the first race didn't... I came second, but it wasn't too bad. And um, we sorted the car out for the second one. And another win means that Carroll has now 131 points, compared with Piccioni's 64 and Colbert's 63. It's close for the placings, but Carroll's out in front. And out in front on the grid, for the second of the two championship class races. James Courtney and Ronnie Bremer, the Dane and the Aussie, at the head of the order. James Courtney again is going to need another good start on this tight twisting track. Bruce Giovanni and Michael Keehan line up behind them on row two of the grid. Behind the Frenchman and the Irishman come the two Brits, Robbie Kerr and Mark Taylor, fifth and sixth, ahead of the American Richard Antonucci and the Finn Hecke Kovalainen. The Swede Robert Dahlgren and Alan van der Merwe make it a very international top ten, ahead of Rob Austin and Brusatin, Carboni, Giudici, Fabi and Gilmore. A full grid again on this tight twisting circuit. Courtney, another great start. Bremer in second place. But Keehan, an absolutely brilliant start, moving up the order. And that is a brave move down into turn one. Oh, but too brave. Bremer's front wing goes flying. Courtney's looking good in second place. It's the two Carlin teammates. Courtney and Keon first and second. Bremer's got that damage front wing. Is that going to spoil his race? I think so. It's going to make a big difference around this track. They've had plenty of testing and they've got the cars into a really nice balance. And already he's going to have lost a, a great deal of front end downforce. We're riding with Bruce Gianni in fourth place. He is chasing Ronnie Bremer. Bremer in a Manor Motorsport prepared Delara. This one is one of the Promotechmi team cars. 
and maybe this is a little bit of a defensive move. Takes that very tight inside line, holding back number seven, Robbie Kerr, last year's scholarship champion. And behind Robbie Kerr in sixth place, we're now riding with Mark Taylor. Up over the crest, the cars pull negative G there. A big smile on the face of Trevor Carlin. And that's, I think, because his man has moved away around into second place. His cars are running one, two, and there doesn't seem to be any damage on the back of Keon's car. Yeah, Keon's been very lucky there to get away with uh, no puncher. He tagged the front end of uh, Bremer's wing, and normally that would result in a puncher. Well, good news for the Carlin Motorsport team still. Number two, Alan van der Merwe, the South African, up into seventh place now, ahead of Kovalainen and Carboni. Rob Austin closing in on the two yellow and white cars in his pale blue machine. But van der Merwe now making it, well, it could well be three Carlin Motorsport cars in the top six at this rate, and that's good going. But disappointment there for number 18, Andrew Thompson, dead engine, pulling over to retire. Meanwhile, flying over the coast, Mark Taylor is hunting down Robbie Kerr. Again, Mark's looking very aggressive in the opening laps here and uh, he's attacking those kerbs in a very nice fashion. Fantastic driver's circuit, there's blind brows. You point the car at the sky on some of these corners. Now, this is one of the great overtaking points. Oh, I'm going very wide indeed. Van der Merwe there holds back Kavalainen and, and Carboni, the two teammates squeezing one another right beside that park car of Andrew Thompson. And I think they're getting nervous about the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here because there's wheel banging going on down the order. Rob Austin bangs wheels with Carboni. Kovalainen pulling away at the head of this little group now and closing back in on van der Merwe. It really is a dogfight for 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th. I don't think van der Merwe is the, the quickest guy out there. He's certainly been able to hold everyone back at the moment, especially down in the chicane and uh, down the other end of the circuit, down at the hairpin. And again, you can see van der Merwe heading into the Clark curve, runs uphill over the crest, and a huge twitch there from Heke Kovalainen. He really is driving the wheels off that yellow and white car. But if you look at his teammate just behind, Carboni's making a great move on Rob Austin there into the hairpin. I think he's got the inside line. Bit of a lock-up. He's just managed to squeeze it through. Well done. Good move. Fabio Carboni, the man on the move. But look again, Kovalainen. And Kovalainen's on the grass. Now, I know the Finns are used to driving on the dirt, but that is something else in a Formula 3 car. And it's three abreast into Duffer's dip now. Rob Austin's trying to find his way through. Carboni's already done it. It really is fantastic racing down the order here, but that was a scary moment for Kovalainen. Van der Merwe had a really poor exit from the hairpin then, and uh, Kovalainen was trying to get down the inside up to the first corner and squeeze on the grass. Maybe a bit too much there. Now, do you think that was a fair move by Van der Merwe? Well, Van der Merwe left it a little bit late before he shut the door, and uh, Kovalainen always had the option to back out and try again a bit later. Well, Kovalainen losing a lot of ground there. Van der Merwe still in seventh. Mark Taylor still running in sixth place, though, running down to the Duffer Stip, riding with Mark Taylor. There's the field ahead of him. Oh, and he's just got away from him. And that's going to hurt. Well, parked neatly in the kitty litter, Mark Taylor is parked in the same place he left the car in the first of the two races. Mark's been very aggressive in both races and really attacking the circuit and maybe this time he just attacked a bit too hard, hits this inside kerb really hard and makes a, makes a bit of an error on the exit, gets on the throttle a little bit too early and round it comes. And then skating down that hill, it's a very steep downhill run there and just neatly backing into the gravel trap. Darren though, is it a challenging circuit or is it just simply unforgiving? It's both really, very challenging and uh, very unforgiving. Um, it's one of those circuits that if you're in a Formula Ford or something small, you have a great time, and I imagine these guys are really having to concentrate in the Formula 3. Well, there is maybe a lapse of concentration. Rosatin and Giudici just pushing beyond the limit of their braking down into Taylor's hairpin. They're both beached high and dry in the gravel trap. James Courtney still well ahead from Kian, Bremer and Juani. This is the battle still going on for sixth place. Van der Merwe holding off the rest of the order. Carbone and Austin right behind. And the driver still in the car there. That is Brusatin and Giudici still off at the hairpin. What happened there? These guys are braking so late, and it looks like Giudici's just got his braking marker wrong, and uh, he's gone at the back of Brusatin. Well, both the cars beached in the gravel trap at the moment. Racing still going on, though. And there is, well, flying, literally a kangaroo hop through the kerbs at Duffer Stip for the Aussie James Courtney. He is cakewalking this at the moment, five seconds ahead of the rest of the order. Meanwhile, the number two car still fighting hard for the places and the championship points here. And I've got to say, Van der Merwe's done a great defensive job with a car that perhaps isn't as fast as those that are still closing in on him. 
Carboni, Austin and Kovalainen and another spinner. Oh, and that's getting to be a very crowded parking area. Tor Graves now off at the tailor's hairpin as well. He's spinning his back wheels in the gravel trap and heading down there. Look at all the cars parked down there. And I think they're going to send out the safety car because Tor Graves' car in particular is stranded right on the edge of the track. Oh, and an interesting overtaking maneuver there. Yellow flags being waved and Carboni moving up. Carboni's made a move definitely under the yellow flags there. He must have seen that there's more cars in the gravel down the bottom and realised that there'd be a yellow flag out, but he's still, he's made that move and he's going to have to pay the consequences. Well, I'm sure that Fabio Carboni is going to be heading for the clerk of the course's office after this race. It'll be interesting to see whether that has an effect on the results. And also taking advantage of that to outfumble them goes Rob Austin. But the safety car is indeed out on the track. And that is while they remove Tor Graves' car from the very edge of the gravel trap. His front wheel's almost on the track. But of course, with the back wheels in the gravel, he can't go anywhere else. A very small mistake there by Tor, and he's just locked it up under braking, maybe on the downshift, but that's it, he's in the gravel, game over. Well, meanwhile, the race is going to still be on for James Courtney, but all that advantage is gone. The only benefit is as Kian is his teammate that is right behind him as they get the green flag this time. It's Kian, Bremer, Juani, Kerr, Van der Merwe, Carboni across the line. And again, the racing is on. And Van der Merwe with Carboni all over the back of him now. And the Japanese driver, Hosokawa, closing in as well. Bit of smoke from the back of Hosokawa's car there, pushing that car right to its limit ahead of Robert Dahlgren with Matt Gilmore completing the top 10 through the chicane. Carboni's kicking up the dust, but the battle's still on for sixth and seventh places. Van der Merwe versus Kovalainen. And Heke Kovalainen's got to find a way past that Carlin Motorsport car. Don't forget his teammate already has, and there he is rattling with Robbie Kerr and going, oh, trying to squeeze it down the inside, and there's contact. Kerr spins off. Oh, and he's gone back in the middle of the track. This is not good news. Right into the path of Hosokawa, Van der Merwe. There's contact there. Heke Kovalainen spins out on the grass. Well, Kerr gets going again, so does Kovalainen down the order. Oh, but, oh, very nearly a second collision down there. That is what you call knock-hill mayhem. I don't think Robbie was expecting that move. It was very late in the braking area before Carboni made the move. A little tag, round Robbie goes, Carboni's off in the gravel, and then mayhem behind. The irony of it all is that Carboni made the move, but it was his teammate Kovalainen that came out worse, hitting the grass on the right-hand side, spinning across in front of the field, and basically he was the last one away. <laughs> well, I'd certainly like to be providing spare parts for the Dallara cars at this rate. Back into the pits, though, and that is Fabio Carboni back into the Fortec Motorsport garage, and I think that is his racer. Oh, and that is a big, big disappointment. Ronnie Bremer, the Danish driver who's done so well here, is out at the end of the pit lane, and that is a big blow to him. He was running so well at the order. So that has changed the complexion of the race completely. James Courtney and Kian, his teammates, still out in front. Bruce Giovanni in third place. Alan van der Merwe, Shinya Hosokawa, fourth and fifth across the line, locked together. Then it's Robert Dahlgren and Matt Gilmore. And we're into the closing stages of the race now. This is the battle down the order for fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh places. Courtney, Kian and Giovanni, first, second and third, are already well on the way through the last lap. There is James Courtney and the Carlin Motorsport team are set to get four cars in the top six places. That really is some achievement. But what about this? Heading to the chequered flag. It's James Courtney from Australia. <laughs> leaping for joy inside that car, punches the air with delight because he has made it two wins from two starts in Knockhill. He's survived the mountain mayhem and he's out on top. And just look at the livery of the cars in the lineup. Four of the top five places taken by the cars in the livery of Carlin Motorsport. Courtney Kian, Juani, Van der Merwe and Hosokawa. Sixth place goes to the Swede, Robert Dahlgren, ahead of Matthew Gilmore. Mark Mayall is eighth, ahead of Rob Austin and the Italian Stefano Fabi. I finally got my start sorted out, which we saw today. Helps a lot, so um, now they're sorted out. Hopefully we'll finish like this for the rest of the year. Had to focus on my restart, make sure I get a gap on Mick uh, off the restart so he didn't have a, any chances to lunge me. So uh, we got a really good restart, got a gap and uh, didn't look back, so it was good. And those two wins have transformed the championship table. James Courtney, from being 13 points behind, is now 27 points clear of Robbie Kerr at the head of the championship. It means the Formula 3 series is wide open once again. James Courtney managed to keep the madness of the Formula 3 field behind him and notched up his second win of the day. With his teammate Michael Keon coming in second, it's a nice one-two for Carlin Motorsport. Join us again in two weeks' time when the field go off to Croft. See you there.